What is good? Bang, fresh crack, because we're here on a Saturday night. We're gonna bring you some 2025 names you need to know, running back edition. Now there's a, a large landscape of these running backs about to infiltrate the NFL. So the second half of this podcast, we're gonna take a look at the current landscape of the NFL and see how this class could possibly impact it. We got Austin over here. We're talking on a Saturday night, so some of these stats and uh, may, may need to be updated a little bit on the overall scale, uh, but some of these guys have played. So, Austin, how's it going, man? Why, why don't you tell us and give us a nice little, just a quick list of, of some of these big-time running backs that we're, that we're about to uh, really get familiar with here over the next year? Yeah, man. As far as the running backs from the 25 class, it, you'd really need to know, you know, you got the big dogs and Ash and Janty, Marion Hampton, Quinshawn Judkins, uh, even, you know, Nick Singleton, of course, I still have him in that tier. Travion Henderson, not far off, but a few other names to mention. We got Ollie Gordon, and we'll talk about him later today. Caleb Johnson, one of my favorite running backs, Jordan James, Catron Allen. We don't know if Catron Allen's coming out yet. He's an interesting name. Trevor Etienne, of course, mm-hmm. Travis's younger brother. Damian Martinez, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Tosh yeah. Brooks. But those are about twelve running backs. Some some of the top running backs from this class. Yeah. Any, any any big names that I missed? Devin Neal, who's a favorite of mine, right. uh, yep. didn't come out last year. The uh, the there's two Michigan running backs, right? Um, oh yeah, ab- absolutely. The Rutgers running back has been been pretty solid. There's more guys out there that that people are going to be excited about that that we're going to get familiar with over time. So we're not into the full breakdown of these guys, but we're starting to. Uh, scratch the surface and, and talk about these these running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks. So be sure you like, subscribe, comment below so you get all this information sent right to your little fingertips, get a little notification, and then you can see what the boys are up to. So today we're going to talk about Caleb Johnson, uh, Damian Martinez, Taj Brooks, and Jordan James. We're going to talk a little bit about those guys, give you a brief overview of where they're at, what we like about them. And then, like I said, we're going to hop into talking about kind of how this class can impact the uh, landscape of the current running back position and the current running back crop in the NFL because we we kind of need it right we need a, we need a little uh, injection of of some youth at that position so Austin why don't you start us off give me uh, give me your thoughts on Jordan James yeah Jordan James man one of my Oregon. faves yeah he's he's absolutely one of my favorites as well and I'll paint the picture for you. Man, we're talking about five foot ten running back, two hundred and ten pounds. So workhorse definitely does come to mind, right? That that build from Jordan James is what we want to see, and uh, his his resume, man, it just gets stronger every single week. I mean, twenty years old, projected to run a four four five forty, right? The eighty third percentile. I I don't I don't know necessarily where he's going to run, and to tell you the truth. I don't really care a whole lot because the film looks very good. Uh, I personally have an early second round grade, grade on him. Like there's a world that exists where he could sneak into the end of the first. I don't think it's going to mm. happen. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I wouldn't put my money on it, but uh, crazier things have happened. Uh, he's been the clear you know, lead running back for Oregon. And for context, he has three times the amount of rushing yards as Noah Whittington. That the next closest running back on Oregon's depth chart, by the way, if you didn't know who Noah Whittington was. And it's it's been the most ideal season thus far for the Oregon Ducks, right? Sitting at nine and zero, number one overall in all of college football. It's just been a dream season. And uh, the story, it's still being written, right? He's gotten it done with Bo Nix now. He's gotten it done with Dylan Gabriel under center. I, I thought his hands were really impressive. Knows how to move the chains. Always falling forward. Really, really quick feet. Like the tape... The tape is good, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. And I, I really believe last season he could have erupted if it wasn't for Bucky Irving, who, you know, obviously was not only in front of him, led college football with, uh, led all running backs in college football last year in receptions. And Bucky Irving looks like a legitimate NFL running back right now, right? He's, yeah. he's not, oh, yeah. a, he's, he's already, you could argue, won the job or damn close to it. Getting back to Jordan James, for Jordan James as a true sophomore to come in and average more yards per carry than Bucky Irving during his most impressive season at Oregon, that really speaks volumes, right? 7.1 yards per carry. That was awesome. It was enticing uh, to just to watch him perform at an even higher level as a junior. And I'm not here to compare Jordan James to Bucky Irving, but watching him put up the same amount of rushing touchdowns on 80 less attempts last year 
Again, very appealing. They both had 11 rushing touchdowns. And listen to this. Jordan James has over 1,000 scrimmage yards through nine games already. He's on pace for over 1,500. He's on pace for just shy of 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns this season. Casey, uh, a few more things to wrap up Jordan James. You want to talk about ball security? Jordan James does not have a single fumble mm, in, 170, yeah. in 172 touches in 2024. Hold on. If you think that's impressive, Jordan James actually hasn't fumbled the ball in his entire collegiate career. That's 341 touches. You better believe that NFL GMs, they're going to strongly take this into consideration when they're on the clock, right? So I have Jordan James as an early to mid second round pick in my way too early 2025 dynasty rookie rankings. Uh, And Casey and the listeners, I'll leave you with one final message about Jordan James. He doesn't get involved with the outside noise. He just does his job. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of James. I like, I like everything you said there. He's kind of the engine that, that drives Oregon offense. I mean, I think, you know, Dylan Gabriel, a bit different of a quarterback than Bo Nix and the offense is a little different kind of what they're doing over there. But I, I love watching uh, James week in, week out. Definitely one of my favorite watches right now. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take it over to, to Caleb Johnson here. So I went with two bigger backs um, and, and not that James is, is small by any means. I wanted to focus on the big dogs because last class, you know, you weren't, you, you weren't sure who was going to be doing what there was a lot of smaller kind of Kings in that one. Uh, and this one, we got, we got a, a lot of big dogs uh, and Caleb Johnson's no different. Uh, he's coming in at six foot two twenty five. He'll be 21 in August, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. PFFs run great on him. They have him tied for fourth, 90.1. Uh, and he's just been excellent this year. He has got uh, 1,326 yards uh, total on the season. And now, like I said, he played, I believe, Friday night. So all the PFF, where he stands on the rankings of all the running backs, might be slightly different by the time you know you can go check this out for yourself. So I'm, I'm a game behind on that. You know, he, he's gone over 100 yards in every single game outside of Ohio State. And in that game, he had 81. And then in this past game versus UCLA, just this week, he struggled a bit. The offense struggled a bit where he only had 49 and average 2.7. But don't let that fool you because this guy has been having a tremendous season. And then up until that game, he was ninth in attempts with 170th. He had 1,277 yards. That's good for second in the nation. 7.5 yards per attempt. Uh, that was good for fifth. 19 touchdowns. This guy's a touchdown machine. Zero fumbles, just like your boy James over there. 53 missed tackles for so big fella, but can can make you miss a little bit. That's tied for seventh. Long of 75, so got some longer speed there. He's not super fast, but not terribly slow. Uh, that's tied for 16th. Yards per contact, eight, 848. That's third overall. Yards per contact per attempt, 4.99. That's good for fifth overall. Rushes of 10 yards or more, 34. So, you know, he, he's able to extend, a, uh, you know, just not get what's blocked for him and pick up a little extra. That was good for second overall in the nation. Breakaway percentage, sixty or 64.3%. That's good for third overall in the nation. So that that shows you that hey, we can that and that's a, a run of 15 yards or more. He's got 54 first rushing first downs. That's good for eighth overall. He's got 21 targets on the season and 19 receptions. So you know the analytical crowd likes to see that like 20 to 21 reception threshold, and he's going to go over that with no problem. The elusive rating for PFF is 153.1. That's tied for 13th, and he's got 26 runs over 15 yards or more. So. Bigger back, obviously showing some traits that can be explosive, right? You know this offensive line for Iowa is going to be good year in, year out. That's one thing that you can usually lean on, right? But Johnson's taking full advantage of that line while creating on his own and maximizing a lot of his opportunities, which is what you want to see. You know, you could put a lot of backs behind there and get pretty good production from them. But back in the day, Akram Wadley, uh, I believe was his name, was was a guy on the show that we uh, had some fun with. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Watching Caleb Johnson at six foot two twenty five. When he moves around, I kind of get a feeling that he kind of just kind of glides and floats around the field. It's not this big you know, lumbering guy. It looks real easy for his movement. I think the contact balance is really strong. Um, excellent tackle breaker. 
felt the decision making process and the vision were all there. Not really a concern for me. Uh, I don't think he has a problem getting outside and turning the quarter again for a bigger guy. That's nice to see. Quickness in the burst for the size is, is strong. The long speed isn't oh my god fast, but it's I, again we're seeing here that it's it's plenty good, right? It's not it's not like oh it's a it's a huge red flag. It's a huge problem. I don't think he's terribly slow where he just gets caught all the time. The pass pro seemed really good from what I can see, uh, and the hand seemed really good from what I can see. So checking all checking those sort of boxes again. We're not fully deep dove into any of these prospects on the film. I've watched some Iowa games. I've dug into some film before we did this. When we get to the point of the season where we're ranking these guys and telling you who we like over who, we'll really get into the minutiae and break that stuff down. This is kind of just the early look, and that's kind of my first you know take with with Caleb Johnson. There, I really like him. Um, I've seen some people kind of be up and down on him, but as far as I can tell, I'm not really sure what the down is here. I don't know how you don't love him at this point, right? I don't want to call him Ashton Janty, but... Uh, well, you know, if, if Janty wasn't doing what he was doing or Janty wasn't doing what he was doing, I feel like well, there would be a lot more Caleb Johnson hype, right? Absolutely. You know, without question. I mean, he's going to go down as a Iowa Hawkeye legend at this point, right? Uh, you know, and you know, he's chasing him in rushing yards. He's he's not far off in touchdowns. Yeah, and, you know, maybe. he... Yeah, he's he's really right there. I know. I saw a few graphics on Twitter today. He's he's right there, man. Uh, but he's been he's been a lot of fun. And no, I don't think he's in the Heisman conversation. But yeah. you know, he's he's having a hell of a campaign. Yeah. All right. Well, talk to me about Todd Brooks here because uh, I, I definitely don't know a ton about him. I know people like him. Saw that they were in a in a good game with Colorado today. Colorado pulled it out. Some mm-hmm. big wins in the college landscape today. Old Miss taking down Georgia. South Carolina withstanding Vanderbilt there and, and really a dominant performance. So Miami lost. Uh, Georgia Tech yeah. took them down. So That's- some fun big games uh, this weekend. And as we're talking to Alabama and, and LSU are playing, I'm sure that'll be a good one. So sorry. Well, uh, hit me with some Taj Brooks talk here, Austin. It's been a wild week. That's for sure. It's, it's been a great season. And it's crazy, man. Like this college football regular season, it's almost over already. I feel like it just yeah. in a blink of an eye, it's just start to finish but Taj Brooks man you know 5'10 220 so near identical size to Jordan James in terms of height and weight but very very different type of running back right so I'm watching the film on Taj Brooks first thing that comes to mind man it's the patience right and, and I'm not gonna by any means compare him to Le'Veon Bell right he, he crossed my mind for a split second because I felt like he was very hesitant at the line uh now granted you know Le'Veon astronomically more, more more gifted and uh in terms of uh like when i'm thinking of taj brooks i kind of view him as uh i don't i don't want to just flat out call him slow i i do think he's definitely you know sub 50 percentile in terms of speed at the position but but look i, I want to credit his vision right his ability to make defenders miss it uh it really stems from that uh now he's he's shiftier than i thought like i, I was i was watching the film on taj brooks and i'm thinking you know he, he probably shouldn't be able to make this many players miss at at his build but uh you know physically he he looks like a pretty stocky dude and and i know i've probably been a little bit all over with with comparing him to different running backs in this segment already but i don't want to call him like Mike Davis stocky, but he is a thick boy. He's, uh, mm-hmm. he's, he, you know, I'll, I'll come out and say that again, I, I am a little worried about his speed. I saw NFL draft buzz. Uh, I, I, re- I really not a sponsored ad, but I, I really enjoy their content. They had him projected at a four, six, five, 20 mm. second percentile 40 time. Now who the hell knows how accurate that is. I just want to say, I, I was not impressed with Taj Brooks speed. A, a reminder, like we saw Audric estimate. He, he fell to day three. I really believe it was because of his 40 time. Now, Braylon Allen, another one, man, like he, he didn't run. I wonder if he knew he wasn't going to have the greatest 40 time was afraid it was going to hurt his draft capital. I don't know, but, uh, you know, look how, Todd, good, I'm, look I'm, how good Allen's look though, you know, so it yes, doesn't matter, right? It, that's really the point I'm getting at. It just, it doesn't matter. So, uh, it'll just be interesting to see how Taj Brooks approaches the combine when uh, I know I'm assuming inevitably that he will be asked. Taj Brooks, let's let's start talking about the production, the stuff that matters. He's in year five right now. He's at Texas Tech. He is in his fifth straight season there, by the way. Never transferred. But here, here's the deal. Like taking a leap forward every single year in terms of total yardage, overall production, a great thing to see gradual improvement. Right. Never going to be mad about that, Casey. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't until his seniors senior season last year. 
until he really broke out, right? Amassing 1,600 plus yards, 10 touchdowns. Uh, and the durability with Taj Brooks, like that needs to be talked about. That needs to be appreciated more playing 13 plus games in consecutive seasons. A lot of college miles on him, Casey. And mm. his increasing attempts every single year, it's something to keep in mind. He's closing in, ready for this, 900 career touches at Texas Tech. Ooh. 900. Like that. that's a huge number. That's a crazy number. It doesn't concern me. I'm not worried that his body's too banged up. I hear that narrative about a lot of players in college. It's like, come on, man. These guys are built for this, right? And uh, he, you know, in terms of actual production accomplishments, he just surpassed 4,000 rushing yards, 39 touchdowns. It Look, this tells me that he's got talent on the, he's been able to stay on the field and he's been a game changer at Texas Tech. You know, he's, he's a big bruiser type of running back. You know, if, if I'm under center, if I'm the quarterback, man, I want him blocking for me. Uh, he's he's a type of guy, you know, if I'm scrambling, I want him as the lead blocker. Uh, and and if I'm just dropping back, you know, I want yeah. him blocking for me is really what I'm getting at. Right. And and hey, he's also a, a very good pass catcher, like soft hands. We saw we saw consecutive seasons of 25 plus receptions. Right. So if you just have to dump it off to the back, you know, it, he's he's proven that he's capable of doing that. Now, as we wrap up this segment on Taj Brooks. I want to be very clear. I am significantly less bullish on him than I am on Jordan James. I, I have him here in terms of draft production projection <laughs> mid fourth round. That's where I have my personal grade on him. And now I saw a little bit of like Tyler Algier, like visually st- stylistically is the word mm-hmm. I should use. Stylistically speaking, uh, Taj Brooks, he, he's just got that low center of gravity. He's not afraid to make the initial contact. And, uh, Last little nugget for you. I have him as an early third round pick in my way too early Superflex dynasty rookie rankings in 2025. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, and and we've talked about some of the higher end guys uh, in a previous show, and we'll talk about more of the higher end guys. We picked four guys and mixed it up here a little bit. I, I'm going to go Damian Martinez on this one, and I don't I don't quite have him in the same classes like Caleb Johnson or, or James that we just talked about. So same kind of like Brooks. This is in by no means like saying we're ranking these guys in any which way. Just bringing to your attention different guys and different styles of guys here as we get going uh, and heading into the 25 class here. So like Taj Brooks, like the breakdown there. So Damian Martinez, another big fella here, six foot two, 32, 20 years old. PFF's got an 89.7 rush grade on him. That's seventh overall in the nation. So pretty solid there. And this is a transfer from Oregon State. Uh, his freshman year, he averaged 6.1 yards per tote uh, and had 982 yards and one fumble. So a solid freshman year. And then he comes in next year at Oregon State with DG, DJ Uyunglele and puts up 1,100 yards, 6.1 again on the ground, and then nine TDs and one fumble. Uh, has a great year there. Everybody loves some Martinez coming into this year. Uh, they transfers to the U. Uh, now they have some running backs in there and they rotate him around. So he's not getting like the full complement of all of the carries over there. Like last year, you saw 195 attempts from this guy right now. On, uh, like I said, I have it up until this last game, not the loss to Georgia tech, which in that game, he went 15 for 81 averaging 5.4. So these stats are pre that game, but only 104 attempts there, as opposed to what we saw last year as 195 total for the year. Like you said, the year's almost over. in attempt, eight TDs, zero fumbles, 24 missed tackles. He's got a 53-yard long, yards after contact, 426. uh, Yards after contact per attempt, 4.12. Rushes over 10 yards or more, 16. Breakaway percentage, 34.2. First downs, 39. Targets, 16. Receptions, 13. Elusive rating, 101.5. And runs over 15 yards or more. There were eight of those. So, not nearly the the gaudy numbers that Caleb Johnson's putting up. Again, also in a, in a mixed rotation, you can see that he can put up bigger numbers if he's you know. But he's more of a guy that you know. Not that Caleb Johnson isn't, but he's kind of a big fellow who can lean on you the whole game, uh, and kind of wear you down and finish you off. Uh, I think one of my first takeaways while watching him uh, was just visions and patience behind the line. You you talked about it with Brooks, and I think that it's kind of similar for Martinez. He's a big guy. Um, he's certainly not twitchy or, you know, really fast. So you could maybe point to the patience behind the line of scrimmage as being like 
that's that, that's the patience behind the line. He's not fast yeah. enough, but no, I, I don't feel that way. I think he sees it really well, and I think he kind of picks and pokes and uses stutter steps behind that line to find the spots or lane, and then he goes for it. And he's got okay acceleration, okay speed, um, and good luck if if you if you get in front of him. He's you know, a lot of clicking and clacking when you're watching uh, Damian Martinez there. He does have some some good wiggle and and some moves for a big fella here. Uh, you'll routinely see him with a defender on his back or more than one fighting for those extra yards. So he can, he can kind of do all that dirty work for you. I don't believe the hands are a liability from what I could see. Everything was a, a pretty handsy catch, not a decent amount of confidence in those hands. You're not going to put him in the slot. He's not that kind of guy. You're not going to you know, get some kind of crazy receiving upside, but he can go find space sitting in and help his QB out. I, I saw it a few times in the film that I watched just a big pile mover, Physical back just sucks to deal with down in, down out. And and from what I could pick up, pass pro was was good as well. So really like what Damian Martinez can bring. Just has a really NFL style first and second down back and, and could essentially and potentially turn into a three down back. Uh, but I would see see the beginning of his career being definitely viewed as a one or uh, first and second down back and then, and then get the goal line work because uh, this is a big physical fella and moves quite a bit differently than Caleb Johnson does. So like what Damian Martinez can bring to a team, uh, I don't think he'll have highly as, you know, the draft clout as some of these other guys that we're going to talk about, but worth mentioning for sure. And going to have a role uh, at the next level as somebody's early down grinder to at least start with. And I think he can, you know, he, he gets better as the game goes on. The more you can feed this guy, the more he's banging on you, the more he's leaning on you, the worse for the wear the defense is. So that's kind of the picture that I'm painting with Damian Martinez here early in this cycle. Any any quick thoughts on Damian Martinez before we go explore this landscape of uh, NFL running backs and how some of this could change with some of these guys we're talking about? Yeah, I, you touched on a lot of good points, you know, and anytime you transfer to an even bigger program and you're still, you know, averaging a high yard per carry, you're still producing. In fact, you're increasing in the passing game, right? All good signs to see. So it's yeah. it's that was very reassuring. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I like I like what I saw from Martinez down there in Miami. Obviously got the loss this week, but still very much in the the uh, college football playoff oh, yeah. scenario there. Uh, they're they're going to have a chance to go compete for an ACC championship. Um, we'll we'll kind of see how that plays out. Clemson uh, got the win over Virginia Tech today, but they did lose to Louisville last week. So we'll we'll kind of see how all that pans out. All right, I thought it would be interesting to just we, we've talked about, I don't know, eight running backs so far, pre-NFL draft, you know, pre-season even being over. Uh, and then we started the show listing, I don't know, you know, you listed 12. We easily explained that to like 15. And and there's a big handful of guys who are like on the more elite explosive level, at least right now in the cycle, who could really make a huge difference and be high draft picks, as well as a bunch of other guys who are going to come in and fill a bunch of roles. We're seeing right now in the NFL that we, we need – some more guys that fill in roles that are that are good backups. I mean, there's there's some pretty good, you know, ancillary pieces at running back, but we we certainly need a shot of life back in there. And the running back getting some emphasis and some love this year from the top guys being doing what they're doing and, and being big parts of you know winning teams as far as this year because maybe how the defenses are, are rolling out there and, and the more shell style stuff. So maybe running backs getting a little bit more love here and. We've got some free agents kind of leaning into this next year. No, nobody like super big, but James Conner is up up there. And, and you know, obviously uh, Aaron Jones, so two older guys up there and in their respective spots. Najee and Jalen Warren. Najee's a free agent. Jalen Warren's a restricted free agent. Chubb uh, is a free agent. Javonta Williams is a free agent. Yep. Alexander Madison, not, not sexy, but just saying like the Raiders, you know, area may be clearing out a little bit. J.K. Dobbins having a little uh, – revitalization of the career here. Rico Dowdle and Dallas is, is going to be a free agent. And I had uh, Chuba Hubbard on here, but no longer a free agent uh, gets signed up for, for four years, 32 million there. So good for him. To just be clear, Dallas doesn't need a running back. Jerry said they're fine. So <laughs> yeah, uh, we can cross them off. Let's talk yeah. about the other 31 teams that might need a running back. They're good. Uh, and, and Jordan Mason, restricted free agent, and Elijah Mitchell, a free agent as well. So the Niners, always a valuable spot. We saw this year how damn valuable that spot was, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so that's, I like Garendo. Good stash there with Garendo right now. And with CMC coming back and maybe Mason being in the fold, I think maybe he gets pushed to the back burner. So he'd be a guy I'd be trying to acquire if, if the noise quiets down a little bit on him. I like 
I like Corendo. So um, let's start kind of, you know, let's, let's go division by division and see kind of where we could see some of these running backs, you know, uh, ending up. Does that sound good to you, Austin? Yeah. Yeah. Take it away. All right. So we got AFC East, Miami, you got, you got HN, right? You got, they just drafted right, which we like and most are there old, but they're so not seeing Miami come and being pressing super hard for a running back. Right. So probably good there. Yep. Uh, Buffalo, same thing. You got cook. They just drafted Ray Davis. He looks good. Uh, I think you're probably set there, right? New England, possibly, right? Ramondre signed up. They, they brought Gibson in, but th- there's a possibility there. And then the Jets are set. So AFC East seems pretty set with kind of what's going on. There. I don't see a whole lot of running back. Like a, they've got a one and a two. So, you know, not that any of these teams couldn't draft them, but kind of set there, right? I mean, all three teams feel like a lock. The only one that I felt like was very debatable was the Patriots. But then, you know, you got to remember, Ramondre signs that massive four-year, $36 million contract extension uh, this offseason. And uh, I don't think it's a question. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, to move to the next division, man. I think I think all four teams, um, I'm really not worried. If anything, maybe a breather back, someone who's better than Antonio Gibson as the RB2 there. But, yeah, I'm... I, I, th- I think people need to be a little bit more bullish on Ramondre than than they probably mm. are. I know it's been up and down his contract. They're terrible, was, though, you know? Yeah, yes, yes. And man so. looks good. So those are all things positive yeah. and, and maybe a cheap buy for Stevenson as maybe it continues to dip. Yep. Next uh, next division, who... All right, let's go AFC, AFC North. AFC North. Let's go AFC North. Steelers, where we mentioned, Najee, mm-hmm. and Warren are restricted free agent open there, right? We have Browns. We mentioned Chubb out of there. Ford's still there, but they've got a hodgepodge of other guys, so so probably open there. Baltimore, Derrick Henry's going to probably hang around for another year. That's going pretty well. Keaton Mitchell looks good. Justice Hill looks good filling in there. So they're probably okay running back-wise. And then Cincy, Zach Moss just had the neck injury. We don't know what that is and how long that's going to be. And, and Chase Brown looks looks really good. So I don't know how you take Cincy there if, if, that's an, if there's any opening or not. You, I could see a later round guy maybe being drafted there just for some depth as things move. So, you know, an open Steelers, like some of these big guys that we're talking about right now, you know, interesting backs there. And, and you know, Steelers not afraid to pull a trigger on a, a higher round running back there. So that that's certainly an interesting spot. Browns, you know, like the running back position as well. So thoughts on the AFC North there of, of these, this new set of running backs coming in there, you know, wide open. Some some fun yeah. landing spots. You got anybody that you, you think would be good in those spots? Yeah, I mean Pittsburgh is is one of the best landing spots, I would argue, right? We have a winning culture, a, a six and two football team currently. They're good this year. I'd put money that they're gonna probably win north of nine games next season. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't know, man. Uh they drafted Najee in the first round. It tells mm-hmm. you they're not afraid to pull trigger if the right guy is there, or at least, you know, in terms of their their evaluations right it, whether it's a a jordan james or a caleb johnson or hell or a genty like, they go like, first round genty uh, they could man they could um i think they're gonna be pretty he, good so it'll be a I, late pick I, I was gonna say i don't think genty's gonna be around there that's why i didn't mention his name yeah. um now i mean I caleb johnson could be there same colors you know yeah. kind of gives you a bigger back uh, maybe they wait a little bit and go just get, you know, Judkin, Singleton, Hampton. I mean, all of this is very possible. And uh, yeah. to tell you the truth, I think that I think Pittsburgh recognizes that their offense definitely needs help. Right. Like after they lost Deontay, man, I mean, they, they did not make uh, I know they added Mike Williams, but come on, man. We, we still need a legit wide receiver two here and we need a legit wide receiver one heading into next season, especially they didn't pick up Najee's fifth year option. Running back one. I not, thought that, not yes. Re, sorry. I thought that was telling though. So yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what, I expect Pittsburgh to be uh, aggressive in the draft and I expect them to add a lot of firepower yeah, I, on, on their offense. I would, I would, I would argue one of the, you know, one of the top three or four backs is, is has a really good chance of ending up in Pittsburgh because it is going to be a later round pick. We're seeing Arthur Smith and this offense and the emphasis that they're putting on how they're playing. It's just that OG Steelers football. They do need another wide receiver. You know, they've made some decent hay drafting receivers, you know, throughout this thing. So they won't, you know, won't pull the trigger maybe in the first round, but second and third round, you can see another wide receiver go there. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't be, like you said, like a Judkins 
or if, if Caleb Johnson be, ends up being a guy that's up there or, or a Nick Singleton up near the top. I mean, maybe people have fallen, have fallen out of favor with him a little bit. Travion Henderson, uh, Ollie Gordon, you know, some of the, some of the big yeah. higher end guys that people like, I could see Steelers being, being one of those teams and, and the Browns being a team in the second round who I could see picking up, you know, one of these running backs that's, that's kind of left over there. The Browns, uh, absolutely. And one quick thing about the Ravens, uh, they do have a potential out of Derrick yeah. Henry's contract after this year. Why the hell would they do that, right? If they think he's good to go and what you're getting out of him right now, why not? Yeah, I, I if anything, I'm thinking extension, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> obviously, because he's, I think he just passed a thousand rushing yards. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're literally in the beginning of uh, November. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So, so Houston, we'll, we'll keep it moving. AFC South Houston, they got Mixon and some some other guys there. But, I mean, that could definitely be a, another back being drafted there. That would be a depth piece. But I would see see that being more of a third or a fourth round kind of draft pick coming in for them from the running back position. Um, Tennessee's got mm-hmm. Pollard and Spears. They're potentially going to you know draft a quarterback. I can't see them making a head coaching change because they just made one. Indy's got JT, but they a number two could be possible there, but I wouldn't see it being a high pick. Uh, and then Jacksonville's got ET on a fifth year option, and then Tank Dell. But you're gonna get a change of of coach there, I think. So you know that could very easily be somebody who brings in a different running back, and maybe I, I see ET as a very very real possibility of being traded before the season starts next year on the last year of that deal. So any any thoughts on the? Uh, AFC South running back landscape there. Yeah, you know, Jacksonville's got to be the the top option here in terms of, uh, you know, adding a running back. I, I just, you know, JT's not going anywhere. Joe Mixon got that giant extension, like you said. Uh, t- Tony Pollard got the giant extension. But, you know, yes, sure, we're seeing Bigsby take a, a gigantic step forward. He, he's looking like... It might be his job long term. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm really torn. Um, and I really like ETN, man. I, I've I've been right on him for year, for yes. several years, and now it's just like, uh, bye, know, I, I, bye. I know, and I don't want to just like point fingers and say everything is is his fault because whether it's Trevor, what, this whole Jags team has just mm. been an absolute mess this year. So I, right, sure. right from top to bottom. It's not just ETN. Yeah. So. I agree. Uh, I agree. Shout out to BT, BTJ. That's about the only bright spot there. But yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on weeks. if you want. Um, right, yeah. right. All right, let's finish up the AFC. We got the West here. We got Chargers. Vidal is on the on the roster, but I think Gus only signed a one year deal, or maybe he's got two. But you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of him. And and J.K. Dobbins is going to be a free agent, right? So that's pretty wide open. Could they bring J.K. Dobbins back for sure? Um, so, you mm-hmm. know, there's. All of these backs could that we mentioned at the top here that are free agents, you know, they're going to need to go somewhere, but it's going to probably be a competitive market there a little bit because, you know, we got a lot of running backs coming in. Kansas City, they got Pacheco and pretty much nobody else. And Pacheco will be, I believe, in the last year of his deal at that point. Well, Denver, Javante Williams is a free agent. Now, they just picked up Estime. They have McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Yep. So that's wide open as far as I'm concerned. I like Estime, but that's open. And then Vegas, uh, like we said, Madison's a free agent. They're certainly getting a coaching change. Probably a Q, definitely a QB upgrade. So Zamir White's still on the roster, but you know they drafted Lob this year. So that's not really a, a, a number one kind of type of guy that you can expect to take anything over. So a- AFC West here, wide open. Biggest wide open shot that we've seen this far. So what are your thoughts there, Austin? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, well, first off, Chiefs, I'm I'm curious, do they bring back Kareem Hunt as their RB2, right? He's on a one-year, $1.2 million deal. Uh, he's looked good, man. And, you know, he's getting 20-plus touches each game. I, I know it's Pacheco's job. I, I think Kansas City is fine. I don't think they're looking to add another running back. Uh, but, yeah, you know. If Chargers, they do, they've made a living off, you know, they did Clyde in the first round, didn't work yeah. out. And then they've, they've done, you know, they, they've hit, they hit a home run with the later round stuff here, so. I would see that potentially. Hey, we'll we'll take it. They took a shot this year. They'll probably take another shot or two in this this upcoming draft. I, I'll see him taking somebody late here. Maybe another Rutgers guy. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he's pretty good. And then the Chargers, right? A really really interesting situation. They want a back, so yeah. that's going to be interesting for Harbs to make that that call of what they do. And I think I think my gut tells me they're. They might resign J.K. I, I feel very confident that regardless if they do or don't. They're gonna add another back, and I think mm-hmm. they're gonna 
they're going to add a legitimate running back, not just some late day three. Even if that, they sign, even if they sign JK, I would I would assume they at least have third round capital yeah, yeah. or plus on yep. a running back. I think. Uh, and then uh, Denver is another situation. I mean, Denver and the Raiders, man. I think these are uh, the Raiders more so, but I think these are two great situations where, man, if you were a decent running back coming out. This is this is where I want to personally land, right? Like like Denver, man, five and four, positive record. Uh, they look like they're on the you know up and up. And come on, man, like like this is the type of situation that these running backs want to fall into. Um, I I just I, I think Denver's trending in the right direction. I kind of like what they're building. So uh, yeah, I, I think Denver's one of the more appealing spots. To tell you the truth. Yeah, and I you know I, I like I like Vegas because it's kind of wide open there as well. But right, get a whole new whole new change of of coaching staff, and you know a really high you know p- potentially Shador Sanders as as your you know QB one over there in Vegas. Uh, so I, I I like that spot as well. That's kind of wide open, and and I would you know we'll see what ownership wants to do there and how how aggressive that. You know, are we going to see it all kind of remain where the the the, the big dogs kind of mostly go in the second round, or are we going to see a few more in the first round this year and a bunch go in the second and third, like we've kind of been seeing? Uh, so that'll be interesting. And then uh, let's take it over to the NFC side here, real quick, and, and talk about these guys. Philly, we got Barkley, and they they just took uh, the dude from Clemson, so they're probably all right. New York's got uh, Tracy, who they hit a home run with, and Singletary still signed up, so they're probably okay. I can't see them doing a whole lot. Washington. Now, this is one that gets interesting. Eckler's old. Um, B-Rob's been good, but this team is making their hay run in the ball right now. And then Dallas, baby. That's going to be the – the uh, everyone's going to be foaming at the mouth for who Dallas is going to take as a running back. Uh, and, and, you know, it'll be it'll be real, real interesting there. So, uh, Dallas, Dak injured now, so the draft pick should be going up and up and up here. Uh, Washington not going to end up in the top of, of much for the draft picks. Um, and you know, New York could, but we don't think anything's going to happen there. So NFC East, some two good landing spots, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, we were Casey, we were praying for Braylon Allen. We were praying, praying for, uh, (laughs) God, imagine if Braylon Allen would have landed in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan Brooks, uh, I mean, like even Blake Horn, like these are all guys that I, I think at every mock I ever looked at Dallas and it's like, nope, Jerry had other plans. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, they should do it, but I, I thought they were going to do it last year. I can't, I can't imagine they don't, they don't take a, a halfway decent running back in this class. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think, I think you almost have to. Is there, is there, you know, I, I hmm. you know, it really gets into the who, who do you have first and second round grades on. You know, I think you know Dallas. I think would want to make a splash at that position. So somebody like a, a Marion Hampton. Um, mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, if Judkins is around or Henderson, I think they want one of those big time uh, guys. And, and Dallas has been decent in the in the higher end picks of, of hitting hitting on those guys. So uh, later round guys. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, Atlanta. I think we're good there. We got Bijan and Algier. Solid. New Orleans. They got Alvin Kamara. And then, you know, we haven't seen Kendra Miller. Jamal Williams was a terrible signing. They need a new head coach. Carolina, Brooks and Chuba. So probably good there. And I think Tampa Bay is good as well. Uh, you know, Bucky looks good. Uh, they're getting good production still out of white. So we're, we're pretty pretty wrapped up in that division. Really, New Orleans is the only question mark with, with Alvin Kamara, right? And he just signed a contract extension like two days ago. So I, I'm ready to move on from this division. I, I yeah. really don't. I think this is the worst division so far. Yeah, I think this next one's, uh, you know, kind of close. But Minnesota open right they got aaron jones he's he's out after this year and they don't seem very content on you know chandler's fine they brought in acres but you know i don't, I don't think any of those guys are their future so minnesota's open and that's a really intriguing one right we're, we're seeing um you know what can kind of come out of that right now right uh old aaron jones looks great that uh, green, yep go ahead. sorry go on no you're good I was just going to say that 2017 running back class, they will never die, man. They are <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're keeping, keeping, keep, you know, keeping, keeping it alive over there. You know, <laughs> we're, 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 we're going to have to change age cliffs from, from this draft, right? We got to stop talking about it and we're going to move it a little bit because these boys are still looking good. They look like they got another year or two in them for sure. Um, all right. So Minnesota's open green Bay Jacobs, but you, we know that a lot of them to do that they could possibly get out of there. 
Uh, and they drafted uh, Marshawn Lloyd last year, so probably pretty safe there. Detroit, <laughs> maybe the best in the in the biz right now with the O line and those two guys. And then Chicago, they signed up Swift for a while. They got Roshan. You know that could be potentially a later round pick, but you know I don't. I don't and, and look, we're talking, we're, we're speculating here, and, and every year you're like, oh my god, I can't believe they drafted that guy in the third round. I thought they were good at running back, but coaching changes and and you know. We're strange things happen every single year, right? So Minnie's wide open. That's a that's a great great landing spot, I think. And, and you say strange things happen every year, and we're sitting on the clock. Uh, whatever, two years ago, you see the Vike, you see the Lions give a, a big extension to David Montgomery, mm-hmm. and with the twelfth overall pick, I, I swear <laughs> to God, I I don't know if I've ever been so surprised in my life at the it, during the NFL draft hearing Jameer Gibbs name. So I, I just want to point out, man, just when you think you have it all figured out, that, like we're going to look back and watch this video, Casey, and we're going to be like, I can't believe we didn't see this coming when right. you know, player X, point. running back X lands on this roster. And it's just like nothing makes sense, but it happens every year. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's a great point. Uh, let's finish it up with the NFC West here. Uh, CMC, we've seen problems right now with, with CMC, about to make his debut and we'll see. He could come out here week one, first thing, and and God, you know, I don't want it to happen, but you know, we could have an Achilles issue again right away, right? And then it's then it's probably open to to maybe picking somebody up or drafting somebody. We've seen the backups be good, uh, but that's you know, top three most delicious uh, running back spots in the league. Uh, so you got to be excited about that. Rams, I think we're good there, right? I mean, we can hate on Kyron all we want, or you guys can hate on Kyron all you want, but. He's good. They got Corum. I think we're good. Seattle, I think we're good. We got Charbs. We got Kenny Three Sticks. And then Arizona, we mentioned at the top of this kind of segment, Connor, free agent Benson there. High draft capital on him already. Um, so, you know, maybe he's going to be the, the lead dog next year. You would, you would kind of, you kind of expected it. You kind of thought it would go this way. Uh, but, you know, they're looking like a team that, that this is, they want, they're, they kind of want to be a physical run the ball. Uh, establish some establish some run kind of you know old school throwback i i, I kind of like what gannon's doing i don't love petsing the the oc there but you know pretty pretty new at, at what he's doing and figuring things out and you know they, they could be a dangerous team here moving forward so i could certainly see them spending some more capital some more decent capital while they're running back in this draft so west is interesting so we wrap all that up to say, like, we, we listed 10, 12, and we know that it'll probably come down to, like, six really good running backs, I think, in this class. And this is going to be a good class, and that'd be an excellent what, what you see, and then be a couple of surprises. But even at, like, six to eight, like, we just went through that whole scenario, and there's there's not six to eight great spots. And then there were some, some other guys floating around out here who are still, you know, Javante Williams, Najee Harris, um, you know, some older guys like Connor and, and Jones. I think Rico Dowdle could come in and be a role player. J.K. Dobbins, if he's healthy, he's good. You know, Warren's a restricted free agent. So there's even so there's some options out there. There's there's some trades that could go down with guys with one year left on their deal or whatever. You know, and then we have all these running backs. So so where do they all fit in? Does that make you nervous at all about the running back class coming in? Or are you just kind of going to let the chips fall as they may? I, I mean, your guess is as good as mine, right? Like it, it always th- there's a lot of variables that come into play a lot is going to change right like we we just had the nfl trade deadline like we i think we kind of got an idea of what where some teams are at right like who was shipping away players like whether it was Lattimore, right, right? Mm-hmm. like you see washington going all in right you can, these are just pieces of the puzzle right and and there's a lot more pieces that we still have to gather before we could really form like a, a very strong opinion so um it's it's one day at a time and look if you're a good player you're going to find your way onto a roster it's really that simple you know yeah it's a great call yeah no i I think i think there's a lot of things that we're looking at right now and saying yeah this this is this seems like it could be set but you know they draft a running back and he comes in and 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 gains a spot and does this thing and and then you know you you were shocked on draft day, but then you were like, "Oh yeah, this this did kind of make sense." And now we don't really care, just like you were talking about with with Montgomery and uh, and Gibbs there. So, you know, it's it's always it's always interesting to me to kind of look at this landscape pre, you know, as we're talking about these guys and getting excited and seeing kind of what's open. And there are some really good spots that are going to be wide open, but there's also going to be some spots where it might be a little muddy for a little while. But we need this injection of of good players. There's been a few times that. 
we got a pretty good injection and, and for what, you know, those guys got banged up or hurt or just didn't quite pan out. So we kind of need this uh, youth explosion here of, of six, eight, 10 backs coming in and whether they're all excellent starters or just good role players. It's, I think it's a very, this is, this, this could be a draft class that kind of changes the landscape of the running back here for, for quite some time, I think. For sure, man. And I, uh, it's funny. Uh, I just, <laughs> just got a text. It said Ash, Ashton Janty, 93 yards, one touchdown. We're still in the first quarter. Yeah. So. <laughs> Who's gonna get you? Who, that, that's, that seems like Crazy. Dallas all day long, right? If they could, if they could put it, you know, get a high, Hey, let's, let's throw Trey Lance in. Let's see what we got in the kid. Uh, we paid a fourth for him. We're not going to win anything anyway. Let's get our draft pick as good as you good. Hey, we're maybe we're in the top ten. We're going to take you know Ashton Genty, and that just seems like the most. Everybody will talk about the Cowboys for three months, and Jerry will love it if he's alive. Yep. Um, <laughs> he he always wants to stay relevant. He always yeah. wants to stay in the news. He always wants that new shiny toy. Jerry, if you're listening, do it. Do it, baby. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this show. I thought I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what could be out there and 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 what the shiny new stuff is going to be. That's Austin. You can catch him on the Twitters at Austin Abbott FF. So that's at Austin Abbott FF, two B's, two T's, two F's. Make sure you go check that out. A lot of good stuff over there. Just started a Patreon. If you're not, if you're not already over there, you should be. Make sure you're checking that out because everything that, that's good on Twitter, it's going to be even better on the, on the Patreon side of things and you can get even more... Uh, exclusivity uh, by by helping my man out and help my guy chase his dreams and put a lot of hard work and effort into it. So make sure you go over there and uh, and, and check all that out. You can come check out the uh, Patreon for the FFD. Get the five dollar holler. You got a free Discord as well. We've got extra episodes. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of rebuilding stuff. We're going to be doing ADP, a bunch of drafts about to fire up here. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff. Be sure you check that out. We appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.